I greet you all candidates and uh, also welcome you to the lesson. The subject is communication skills. In our today's session, we are going to study the documents that are used in meetings. The documents that are used in meetings. So at the, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify the uh, documents that are used in meetings. You should be able to explain uh, their uh, role in meetings, uh, why it's important to have the documents, and so on. Now, an official meeting by now candidates, you know, um, should be supported by several written documents. And for the smooth functioning of a meeting, supporting documents must be prepared carefully. And usually, they are prepared by the secretary in consultation with the chairman. And in small business units, such documents are prepared by the office manager himself or herself. In this lesson, we are going to study the most essential documents that are needed uh, to be prepared in connection with the meeting. And the first document is notice. Document number one, notices or notice. Another document is known as agenda. There has to be a document that outlines the agenda of a meeting. Then the third obvious document, minutes. Minutes. All right. Let's start by notice. Now, candidates, when a meeting is to be conducted, a notice is required to be sent to all the members who are expected to attend the meeting. It is just an intimation about the meeting, the conducting of the meeting. And generally, it is typed or printed on the organization's letterhead and issued under proper authority. And the notice of a meeting must include, number one, the name must include the name that is the name of the organization of the organization the notice I've said firstly it must be printed on the uh, letterhead then it has to include the name of the organization, the day, date, and time that the meeting is expected to be held. The day, the date, and the time. Another important element is a place. Where will the meeting be held? Within that notice, it has to be clear location of the meeting, the place of the meeting. That is the address and the specific room or hall where the meeting will be held. Number four is a, the purpose. What is the purpose of the meeting? The purpose of the meeting has to be indicated within a notice, the purpose of the meeting, and if possible, the agenda, if possible, the agenda of the meeting. If the agenda is known, then it's important to include the agenda, the meeting. Another important aspect is the circulation, the date of circulation and um, the secretary's signature. In this notice, there ought to be the secretary's signature, the secretary's signature. And candidates, the public companies and many registered um, uh, organizations 
they may be required to use a legal form of notice for the general body meetings. Legal form, which may include some of these items, the name of the organization, the day, date, time, the place of the meeting, the purpose and uh, gender of the meeting, and the secretary's signature. All right? I've said if it's public companies, the law may require that uh, when uh, writing a notice, that such a notice must be done using a legal form, a uh, legal form of notice for the meetings. And candidates, the notice has to be accompanied by an agenda for the present meeting and the minutes of the previous meeting. The minutes of the previous meeting. I'm saying the notice has to be accompanied by the agenda for the present meeting and the minutes for the previous meetings. The notice candidates of the meeting must also be sent well in advance. Under normal circumstances, could be around, say, seven days. Uh, notice should be given to all members attending the meeting. And if it is located far away, the, the, the uh, far away distance, it is important to give a longer um, uh, duration, around, say, 21 days and so forth. There are also certain meetings that the law stipulates the, the, the time or the, the, uh, the, 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 the days the law may stipulate or may clearly indicate that the meeting, for example, has to be held. The notice must be sent, say, uh, 21 days before the meeting is held. So notice is one of the documents that is used in meetings. Before a meeting is held, a notice has to be issued to the member. So these are some of the contents. These are contents that you'll find in a notice of a meeting, all right? Contents. Mm. The second document is the agenda. Agenda number two. The agenda. Now, agenda means things to be done. It is also called business order or order of business to be discussed during the meeting. And agenda refers to the program schedule of the meeting and is prepared by the convener or the secretary in consultation with the chairman and his approval. And it's also sent along with the notice of the meeting in order to enable the members to do what? To come well prepared for discussions during the meeting. Agenda. An agenda candidate begins with the uh, call to order. That is, that is call to order in a meeting and ends with the postponement of the last uh, meeting. So an agenda is uh, an order of business to be discussed during the meeting. And it's important to candidates to have an agenda for a meeting. It's very important so that uh, people come when they are well prepared for the meeting. Okay? It should cover things like um, uh, In the agenda, you should cover things like reading and approval of minutes of the last meeting. An agenda can cover uh, items like matters arising out of previous uh, meetings, minutes. An agenda can also have uh, maybe apologies from absent members. An agenda can also indicate urgent and non-controversial items. An agenda can include matters requiring close discussion and debates. 
as well as any new or on the spot items which may need approval of the chairman. So it's important to have an agenda because a well-structured meeting agenda is a valuable tool for ensuring that meetings achieve the desired results within the time allocated. Because the outline of activities to be carried out as well as the list of specific topics to be discussed should aim at guiding the participants through the meeting. And therefore, an agenda plays a significant role in ensuring that the meeting is productive. Agenda. It's a second document that is used in meetings. And you can be asked a question like, what are the purposes of an agenda in a meeting? Why is, is it important that uh, the secretary prepares a document outlining the agenda of a meeting? In answer to that question, you can say, one, an agenda gives what we call advanced communication. Advanced communication. Candidates, an agenda ensures that pertinent information concerning uh, the issues to be discussed is passed to the participants in advance. As a result, it will give participants ample time to do their research and carry out consultations. Since the agenda contains list of topics or issues to be tackled or to be discussed in the meeting. Additionally, participants will also know whether they are scheduled to talk or to make presentations and so on. So all the members invited for the meeting know what to expect in the meeting. Advanced communication. That is one reason why it's important to give an agenda before the meeting. The second reason, focus. Focus. Now, an agenda is significant in keeping the participants focused on the topic at hand. And that is because it contains a list of the goals of the meeting, as well as the major issues that are essential in keeping the uh, discussion centered on the uh, meeting's purpose. Alternatively, it can be achieved by informing the participants' priorities or giving consideration to all issues. So an agenda helps the members to keep focus on the objectives of the meeting, focus on the objectives of the meeting. The third reason why it's important to give an agenda to a meeting is in relation to engaging the members. Engaging. Engaging members. Now, in addition to emphasizing the objective or the purpose of uh, the meeting, a brief verbal uh, preview of the agenda at the beginning of the meeting helps set the pace um, of the meeting. It also gives participants an opportunity to identify a standpoint regarding an issue as well as where to fall back when the meeting gets off topic. And as a result, participants get to understand the flow. They get to understand what? They get to understand um, uh, the flow of the meeting. The flow of the meeting. They get to understand the flow of the meeting and to adequately uh, engage themselves in the discussions. So agenda will help the members to engage themselves in the discussion. An agenda, lastly, I can say is a time management tool. Time management 
tool. An agenda is a time management tool. An agenda provides step-by-step -step framework for having an effective and efficient meeting. It helps to ensure effective use of participants' time, especially if the agenda includes a time that will be allowed for each item on the agenda. So sticking to the time allotments helps participants stay focused on the important issues and items on the agenda. So when asked what is the purpose of an agenda, you can uh, give these points here. Agenda. The second document. The third important document is uh, minutes. Minutes. Now, candidates, minutes refers to the record of the decisions taken at the meeting. It's just a record of the decisions, a record of what was discussed at the meeting. And all companies, all statutory bodies, all social organizations, associations, and committees have to maintain a record of meetings. Why? Because meetings are the official record of work done and decision taken, decisions taken at the meeting. So the, the minutes must be precise and clear. And once minutes are approved and signed, it can be even be accepted by a court of law as evidence of the proceedings of meetings that are held. And the main objective of meeting is to record concisely and accurately the essential work done at a meeting. And the minutes of companies, together with statutory bodies, are written in a formal style. Other organizations may write minutes in informal style, but uh, companies, registered companies, must do so, must write minutes in a formal style. And um, minutes must contain contents. Let me let's discuss briefly the contents of minutes. Minutes must contain minutes must contain the name of the organization minutes must also contain the day date and time day date and time when the meeting uh, is held together with even place, let me put there and place, day, date, time, and place. When you write minutes, make sure the minute is dated. The minutes are dated, there is time, there is uh, uh, the date, and the, and the day. Number two, minutes should indicate the number of members present, number of members present in that meeting, number of members present um, at the meeting. Minutes should indicate the name of the chairman, the name of the chairman, the one who chair the meeting, and the secretary, the name of the chairman, the name of the secretary uh, is important to also be included in the meeting. Minutes should also have, uh, this is number five, minutes should have names of members present. Names of members present. Here we have number of members present. If there are 30, you need to indicate 30 members uh, are present. Then you should also have their names written in the minutes, the names of members uh, present, and sometimes the members have to sign that they are present at the meeting. Names of members present. 
the names of members absent names of members absent for example if it is a committee of say 12 members or 11 members and only nine members were present so the 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 the, the committee members should be distinguished there should be distinction between those who, who attended the meeting and those who did not attend the meeting names of members um, uh, present at the meeting and also the names of members absent during the meeting then we also have attendees attendees by special invitation if there are certain persons who are invited to a meeting maybe a specialist who was to train or give a, a, a maybe consultation to the committee or in the meeting then the name of such an attendee has to be included in the meeting you may also have members like auditors um, in a meeting the name of the auditor should be included you may have say bankers and so on then we have also a record of transactions record of transactions what business was transacted in the meeting the name of uh, the record of transactions record of transactions what actually took place what agenda was discussed what was um, discussed at the meeting there has to be an, uh, a record of everything that was uh, discussed at the meeting signature of the secretary included in the minutes you need to have signature of the secretary did the secretary who write the meet the minutes and therefore there has to be the secretary's uh, signature so signature of uh, secretary is important and that signature is supposed to be the, sec the secretary ought to sign the, the minutes after approval um, of minutes by the chairman signature of the secretary after approval by the chairman that means the, it has to be clear in the minutes that the chairman approved the minutes then the secretary signed approval of the chairman and signature of this of the secretary so these are some of the contents of minutes which is a very important document when preparing or writing minutes of a meeting and the candidates minutes have said mean a record of proceedings in a meeting in other words minutes mean a record of proceedings in a meeting minutes candidates is just a type of a report and should therefore be made in what we call past tense or reported speech minutes may be handwritten may be in form of a memorandum minutes could also be typed and candidates it is important to note that the, the primary the primary function of the primary function of minutes is to place on record the proceedings of what took place in a meeting the primary function of minutes is to place on record the proceedings of a meeting as a basis for subsequent action in a company candidates when meetings are held is for the purposes of de deliberating on certain matters uh, which may need action after the meeting 
People don't meet for the sake of meeting. No, there has to be an objective for a meeting. It could be solving a problem. Now, when um, people meet, when employees meet or when managers meet, the purpose is to solve a certain problem. So minutes will contain a record of the proceedings of what took place. The function of minutes is to place on record uh, the proceedings of a meeting and the proceedings is a, a basis for subsequent action or decision. Minutes. And we can even say that minutes constitute the authorization for actions that are taken. There are certain actions before they are taken, there has to be a meeting. Because remember, candidates, we need, we live in a world of what we call democracy. Before decisions are made, people have to sit and decide. There are certain decisions that cannot be made unilaterally. No, there has to be a meeting of people sitting together, uh, deliberating, and then they come up with a decision. So the ministers constitute the authorization for, for such decisions. And they constitute a true and an impartial record of the events. When the secretary writes the minutes, then the secretary is supposed to write down exactly what took place. Exactly took place. It's supposed to be impartial. It is an impartial record of events that took place in a meeting. And that brings uh, the lesson to an end. We effectively stop on that note. Our today's discussion was on documents that are used in meetings. We identified three documents, notices, you have the agenda, then there is minutes. In this lesson, we, I, I, we outline the contents, the contents of a notice. We say that a notice must bear the name of the organization it also has to be uh, printed on a company's letterhead. A notice should indicate the day, date, and time of the meeting, plus the place. Number four, we have the purpose or the agenda of the meeting, if possible. Then the notice has to be signed by the secretary. The second item is the agenda. We identify the importance of having an agenda. One, two three, four. Then we finally uh, discussed the third document, minutes. We said that the minute should contain the name of the organization, the day, date, time, and place of the organization, or where the, meet the, meet me uh, the meeting is to be held, the address, the physical address where the meeting is to be held. Number three, there is number of members present. There should also be the number the total number of members present. The minutes should also contain the name of the chairman and the secretary, the names of members present, names of members absent, attendees by special invitation, like auditors, like bankers and uh, consultants. Uh, their names should be indicated in minutes. Then there is the record of what transpired at the meeting, what business was conducted at the meeting, what was discussed at the meeting. There has to be a record of everything that was said at the meeting. Then lastly, there is a signature of the secretary after uh, the approval of the chairman. The minutes should be signed by the secretary after approval by the chairman. So thank you for attending the lesson. I uh, will give you today's assignment here. So here is your assignment. Question one, define the following terms. One, notice. Two, agenda. Three, minutes. Number two, give five reasons why an agenda should be sent to committee members prior to a meeting. Three, outline seven contents of minutes of a meeting. Make sure the assignment is done before we meet in our next session. God bless you. Bye-bye.
Thank you.